on this side, so we all right. Just somebody will watch this. Who's going to be here on the stay on the platform? Bill, will you try to watch Mrs. Johnson and watch it when Mrs. Johnson comes? <coughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> We're very appreciative of you coming out here so early in the morning. And I'm sure Mrs. Johnson <coughs> and Mrs. Johnson, who will be out in a very few moments, uh, will appreciate all that you're doing. I want to tell you about we some distinguished guests we've had on the plane with us, on the train with us. <coughs> Mr. John Wheeler is going to stay on here for a moment. <coughs> Your mayor, of course, will stay on. Mr. Bro Zip Brawley. Right, Mr. Miss, Miss Stout. Mr. Dean. Mr. Miller. Let's move on, officer. Uh, Judge Phipps at Chapel Hill. Handler. Mrs. Larson. Mayor McClamrick at Chapel Hill, Jack Overman, Mrs. Ms. Carver, Ms. Constantino, Mike Galifianakis, Mrs. Birmingham, Mrs. Porter, Sir John Stewart, Miss Ellington. May I, uh, May I present it at this time, your own mayor, uh, for a few comments and gifts. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Uh, first of all, let me say, for those of you who cannot see up this far, we do have two of the three Johnson girls with us aboard. I have several pleasant duties to perform here this morning, the first of which is to recognize the four co-chairmen who are responsible for making the arrangements for the visit of our First Lady. First of all, the chairman of the Durham County Democratic Executive Committee, Mr. Zip Brawley. The first vice chairman of the Durham County Durham Executive Committee, Mrs. Lina Lee Stout. A gentleman who serves as a part-time banker, part-time philanthropist, part-time entrepreneur, but a full-time Democrat, Watts Hill. And a local banker and civic-minded citizen whose talents are as well known in Washington as they are in Durham, Mr. John Wheeler. I want to take this brief moment also to extend in addition to the welcome which you bear in your eyes, the official courtesies and hospitality to the First Lady of the United States of America and her daughter Linda, the, a warm and gracious and cordial welcome. I, I want to say also that although they are not available on the small platform, it is my honor and privilege to give to Mrs. Johnson a cluster of gifts which represent the products which are manufactured in this area. Thank you so much for being with us, and let's extend a warm hand to the First Lady of the United States. We're on a very, we're on a very tight schedule. I present to you for a moment your governor, Terry Sanford. I'm certainly glad to see so many people out this morning, and I hope you'll let Mrs. Johnson know when she's introduced just how you feel about President Johnson and what we're going to do to give him an overwhelming majority in November. And to introduce your distinguished congressman, we have with us my co-chairman, Majority Whip of the United States House of Representatives, Hale Boggs of Louisiana. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful morning. You're all here today and you see that rising sun? 
which is symbolic of this campaign. This is a rising, going, growing, going campaign all over the United States. Yesterday, yesterday, Mrs. Johnson started in Alexandria, Virginia, and after 14 speeches throughout Virginia and eastern North Carolina, she ended up last night with the President of the United States in your state capital at one of the greatest political rallies that anybody anywhere has ever seen. <laughs> Now, all over this country, Lyndon Johnson is winning. He's winning in... He's winning in Maine. He's winning in Vermont. He's winning in Arizona. <laughs> and yes, he's winning in North Carolina. And now, my friends, I want to present to you your congressman, who represents you ably, who is a great man in Washington, who says with me and Speaker McCormick and Majority Leader Albert, and who will be re-elected on November 3rd, the Honorable Horace Carnegie. This is a great day for Durham and the 6th District of North Carolina. To have the First Lady of the Land to visit us is certainly a wonderful experience. I want to thank all of you who have gotten up so early to come out and to meet this train this morning. The train has been, the crowds have been tremendous as the train proceeded down the track from Washington to Raleigh and on, and I'm sure that as the day passes, they will continue to be larger. Let me say this to you, that it is our hope and our purpose that you will spread the word that you hear this morning as you go about your work during the day. Let me also say that it's a pleasure to have with us in our district the First Lady, and let me introduce to you at this time the wife of the President of this United States and the wife of the next President of the United States, Lady Bird Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Secretary and Mr. Mayor and Congressman Carnegie. I just don't know when I've ever been so flattered to see so many people getting up this early in the morning. I hear there are 12,000 people here. I saw a sign back there that said, we may be sleepy, but we're good Democrats. <laughs> and I understand that a lot of you are going to be working very hard all day long on your United Givers Fund a very wonderful community project. One of the pleasures I take in political campaigns is that they give you an unparalleled opportunity to learn more about America. Everywhere I go, people tell me about their cities and their states. On this particular trip, I've had the good fortune to be escorted by your own secretary and Mrs. Luther Hodges. who not only know all about North Carolina, but have played a great part in making it the prosperous and progressive state it is today. Anyone coming into this part of North Carolina cannot help but be impressed by the research triangle which rests its corners on the three educational institutions, North Carolina State in Raleigh, the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, <laughs> and your own Duke University here in Durham. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know how Secretary Hodges. <laughs> North Carolina College. North Carolina College. And North Carolina College. <laughs> I know how Secretary Hodges poured his heart into establishing this triangle when he was governor, and he has told me how leaders of government, industry, finance, and education worked together to make possible this pool of technological skill so important in our space age. One of the most impressive land of opportunity stories of the last century 
happened right here, where Washington Duke turned two blind mules and 50 cents, or so the story goes, is it right, <laughs> into great fortunes, and eventually became one of America's great philanthropists. While fortunes can still be made, more, still something more important is happening. All North Carolinians are sharing in the present day prosperity. Since 1960, the average per capita income of North Carolinians has gone up $245, which is $13 more than the national average. Now may I say a word that's personal about my husband. The president has brought with him to the White House many lessons of the past, learned in the Depression and in war and from his Southern forebears, some of them who came from right around here. George Washington Baines, a Baptist minister from right up close to Raleigh. It is this more than anything else, the things that he has learned in his quarter century of working for the people of the United States that makes him want to try to put into effect the great society that you hear him speak about. The experience he has to offer is 24 years in Congress, in the House and Senate, three years as your Vice President, and these last 10 arduous, demanding months in the presidency. I believe he has brought continuing stability and progress to the country and lifted our eyes to the expanding horizons of the free world. I am proud of that record. I believe you approve it, and I hope you want to continue it. Thank you. Now, now when I'm looking out on so many students, I want you to know my young student. This is Linda Bird. I want to thank you all for coming, particularly all you young people. I hope some of you had to miss a few classes. <laughs> I always, my mother asked me, how is the best way to get in good with the young people? And I tell them to come at a time when their class is being held and then see if you couldn't get the school to dismiss them. <laughs> but seriously, I want to particularly thank you for all these signs, some of them homemade. And Well, there's some I don't disagree with, but I'm glad that we live in a country where we are allowed to disagree. And after all, we know in our hearts who's right. <laughs> just, just for a word, a charming wife of our new governor nominee, Mrs. Dan Moore. Good morning. Good Democrats all. I know you are good Democrats or you would not have been up this early to come and greet the gracious, charming, lovely First Lady and her daughter. It's a real privilege to be associated with her. So nice to see all of you this morning. Thank you very much for you 12,500 people that came out at 7 o'clock in the morning and the train will move. Stay right there, don't let her step back. <laughs>